Tina from Shabby Dabby Dude. Oh, welcome back to my channel. So we're here for another one in our um, series of um, missing mojo, kind of motivation and inspiration for when you're kind of lost your crafting mojo. Um, and I think we're up to episode four now. So what I thought we could do today is just have a look at doing some very simple um, like collage kind of um, journal cards using a formula. Now, I'm pretty sure that I have actually done this before, so it's nothing new. Um, and I've seen other people do this um, in their ways as well. So, you know, of course, don't take mine as, you know, the only formula um, that is. But it's just something that I find works quite well for me. So basically, again, if you're kind of, you know, feeling like you're lacking a bit of crafting, you know, craftiness, um, I think this is quite a good way to just do something very simple that hopefully, you know, you'd find actually is a sort of, you know, a fail safe kind of approach to doing things. So I'm just going to take this sheet of cardstock. This is just some brown, you know, A4 card. Just going to fold it in half like this. This is going to be my base for my journal cards. So I'm only folding it in half so that I know roughly where to cut. Obviously, I don't like using paper trimmers or anything. I haven't haven't got a paper trimmer. So that's just kind of a quick and easy way to cut it down and then fold it in half again. And that's going to give you a really good size journal card. So, I mean, this is probably, I'm thinking this would be maybe an A6 type of size. Um, you know, if we were sort of talking about sort of card blank sizes, it would perhaps be something like an A6. So cut that down like that. Okay. So I've already got four, four blank journal cards there for using. So we'll just lay them out. Now I recently saw a video from Natasha from Tre Treasure Books and she did um, a wonderful collage formula. Um, where she kind of did the same thing each time and hers was kind of layering up in the middle well yeah in the middle um, three or four different sheets of paper so that's one kind of you know way that you can do it I quite like to do you know again similar similar but just a method that I've found works well for me is I would take something like you know a um, what's the word I mean, it's not really neutral, but, you know, uh, a texty page or, a you know, sheet music, something like that. So it's, uh, oh, I don't know how to describe it, like inoffensive, if you see what I mean. It's going to go with everything. Um, and then basically what I would do is take my paper. So like this. And just put it down on the journal card. So if I have this here or could have it, you know, running down completely and utterly up to you how you do it. Um, or perhaps I'll have it, perhaps I'll have it running across there like that. And then this one I will use at the top. So we've used kind of pretty much a whole sheet of paper there. And then for this last one, I will just use a bit of sheet music. I mean, for me, sheet music and book page, they're a little bit sort of interchangeable, really, because I think they're both, you know, they've got that neutral quality to them that they're going to kind of go with all of your projects. So just like that, actually, I'm just going to tear it down slightly and just have this section instead. So like that. OK, like that. And then all I'm going to do is take three other, sorry, two other bits of paper so is that I've got a total of three bits of paper on my pieces. So, for instance, here, just going to take this down like this. Okay, and that can go in there like that. Then find something that coordinates quite nicely with that. I mean, obviously, I'm mainly using principles because that's what I've got most of these days. But, you know, use whatever you have. If you've got mainly scrapbooking paper, use that. That would be fine. Um, you know, anything kind of that you've got or like to use doesn't have to be printables at all. Like I say, I'm just using printables because that's what I've got most of, you know, these days. So, again, just take some more down here. Like that. Okay. And then... Take 
can move it here. Let's hope that that's going to fit in there. Mm. Oh, only just, actually. Right, let's pop it to this. I'm going to glue these down, actually, because then I can kind of move them out of the way. Otherwise, it's going to be too much, too much stuff on the desk, and then it's just really messy. So let's get my glue. Okay, so oops. just glue straight down onto your journal card, just your sheet of paper. I mean, this is just, like I say, a formula that I have found works, you know, touch wood every single time that I've ever used this. It does work. Um, you know, yeah, I don't know why it works, whether it's because it's, a, you know, set of three, and, you know, odd numbers seem to work always really, really well with crafting and things. I don't really know. Um, but three just seems to be the magic number. You know, getting three kind of pages on there. And in this formation seems to work really, really, really well, I find. So just going to put this down. Actually, I'm just going to I think maybe tear that over slightly oh no I'm gonna have it there so yeah let's just put that one down like that. I'll just have to quickly put a bit of glue there like that okay just move that one out of the way let's glue this one down you know it's just so that I've got less bits trailing around the desk But to be honest, I mean, I think we maybe even did this in a mass make. Um, actually, I'm I'm now kind of thinking, or oh, perhaps we even did this in a mass, mass make. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely nothing kind of new for me. But like I say, it is something that I definitely find very helpful, you know, particularly if I am struggling a bit, you know, to make things come together. I just feel like I know that this does work really well. And, you know, that's just really comforting to know when you're struggling to get things to work isn't it so like that and then just here put this one down here okie dokie like that oops got a smudgy bit there but that's fine because obviously you know I'm going to put some sort of focal points onto my journal cards anyway so that's fine right let's put this one down okay, Jake. like that okay and then oops, take this one so let's just bring in I'm just using kind of what I've got here because, you know, it's uh, not too wasteful if I'm using the same, you know, from the same paper. Otherwise, I'm just going to end up with a lot of scraps. So, yeah, I'm just going to use the same, same papers. Pretty much, anyway. So, like that. Okay, okay. And this one. Okay, just get rid of this because it's, um, yeah, that's a bit better. Okay. Oh, I only just remembered to put the bin out this morning, so I can just hear the dustman now. Thank goodness that I um, remembered. Frustration otherwise, you know, because you have to actually put your bin right out now. Well, we've had to do that for a long time now, but um, yeah, I mean, obviously years ago you didn't have to do that, but oh, and they alternate every other week. So one week it's like recycling, one week it's rubbish. And um, you know, if you forget to put your bin out, they don't kind of think, oh, let's help this person because they're normally really good and do remember to put it out. No, they just just sail past and leave your bin there. 
so then your bin is full for potentially kind of two whole weeks you know like I mean my bins generally every week it's you know by the time they come to do it it's very very full so yeah what happens is if they don't then collect it of course it's then like overflowing pretty much by the following week so it's, it's pretty annoying if you forget you know forget to put it out but yeah like I say luckily luckily I remembered to put it out today so only just actually you know I was kind of like just come upstairs and then I thought oh it's bin day quick 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 and I just always glance down the street and see what other bin or what bin everyone else has put out to remember because I can never remember whether it's recycling or normal you know recycling or rubbish day so I just always have a big glance up the street to see what bin has everyone else put out and um just judge it by what they've done so yeah if if I've got it wrong it's their fault you know my neighbour's fault right let's have this just thought it would be nice to have a slightly different different coloured one so yeah Okie dokie. Okay. Put that one down there. Like that. Okay, right. Press that one down. Like that. So, obviously now can just trim up all those, you know, overhangs on the paper. Like that. Oh, I think I made a horrible job of cutting this, I must say. It does not look straight even to my even to my eyes now I'm cutting it. Oh dear. Oh well. Never mind, never mind. Right. Okay. Oh my goodness, now I've turned it over, it's actually even worse than I thought. So not looking very good. Let me tidy it up a bit on the front. Oh my goodness. This must be the worst cutting I've ever done in my whole life, I think. Absolutely dreadful. Right. Oh, okay. But hey, we've we've made it look all right. So yeah, it looks fine. Um, so just going to trim down all of them. Just exactly the same. Okay, let's hope I've made a bit of a better job of the rest. I think that was just kind of the first one was awful. Okay. Yeah, that one's a bit better. A little bit better anyway. And let's do the other two. cut them down you know they look pretty good already don't they I mean obviously we are going to decorate them but you know even if you chose not to decorate them they look they look pretty good don't they so like I say I mean obviously I will decorate them but yeah I mean they look really nice I think just as they are without even anything else on them okay right oh, I can't make a very good of job of that one either actually but Never mind. Right. Okay. So let's pull them back in. So I talked obviously in the trailer about, um, you know, topper pieces and focal points and things like that. So, you know, this is the type of thing that obviously, you know, you're going to kind of want some sort of focal point on. Um, so this was what I was kind of referring to. So we've got obviously our stamped pieces that we did over in episode one. So I'm just going to take this. Like that. Okay. So actually, I think it 
I think better on there. Oh, it looks good on that one, doesn't it? Probably look good on this one, actually, as well. Hmm. Yeah, either of those it looks quite nice on. Oh, I'm going to have to trim this down again because I actually can't bear looking at it. <laughs> Sometimes things are just so wonky, it's like, oh, I can't actually bear looking at it and seeing how awful it looks. That's a bit better. Oh, not much, not much better, but a tiny bit better. Okay, right. Right, so, yeah, what you're going to do is obviously then get some sort of focal points going on on your cards. Now, I've brought along a few different bits and pieces. I've got here some of my little cottages from my Country Cottages kit. So I'm just going to take one of those. Actually, I'm thinking the bigger one might be better. Yeah, let's cut that. So this is the ephemera part of the Country Cottages kit. So super cute, aren't they? And you've just got just a couple of the fussy cut cottages there. Which look really pretty, don't they? So I thought they would be quite nice little topper pieces. Because I think sometimes that's, um, you know, where you can fall down is, you know, you've got your pieces and then you can't really find the correct, or not correct, but, you know, the topper that you want to put on there. So I think having, uh, you know, an abundance of things. And, you know, obviously mine are mainly printables because that's what I've got mainly of. But, you know, you could use scrapbook papers, you could use book images, you know, anything at all, really. Um, just so long as you've got some sort of toppers going on. So I'm just having a look here. These are from my Belgian blue kit. So again, from the ephemera part of the kit. So let's just take this one for example. Okay. That's quite nice on there, isn't it? Check all on there. Yeah, I quite like it on either of those. Uh, just wonder whether I want to have this man, actually. So let's just see. Oops. He's quite nice on there. Okay, so yeah, that's my little focal points. And then what we can do, we can pull in again more of our bits that we stamped. So let's just bring in a couple of the bits on sort of more flimsy paper. So, oops. Oh, I'm now struggling to find the flimsy paper. Right, here we go. So for instance, I've got these little, um, oh, what do you call these? you know, uh, ticket type pieces. So just going to tear that one down. Okay. Um, what else? I've got these little label pieces. So let's take one of these. Okay. okay. Got a butterfly here. Let's just take the butterfly as well. And just take one of those labels as well. Okay, so I mean, obviously, these are all the stamped pieces that we did the other day. So, you know, you've got these obviously sat ready and waiting. You know, we talked about you know, you may feel like you've not really achieved a lot when you're doing your stamping. But look at how convenient and handy it is to now have these little bits and pieces here on hand, ready to go. You know, which without obviously having spent that bit of time, you wouldn't have these sat there ready. So, you know, it all go goes in roundabouts, really. And um, yeah, I think you'll be kind of pleased that you've got these bits once you once you come to use them. Okay. So, for instance, here... 
we might be able to have this as well, but it might just look a little bit too cluttered, but we'll see. If not, we might just bring in one of my ticket pieces. So that's quite nice like that. And then I might just do this butterfly. Again, this might not be quite the right colour, actually. Oh, I feel so tired today. I feel like I'm literally falling asleep. I have no idea why, but yeah, tired. Okay, let me just see. Oh, that looks pretty, doesn't it? So, yep. We can just layer those things. Now, I'm just wondering about a postage stamp to bring in maybe a little bit of the red. You know, we've got the red from the flowers. It's not really the right colour red. Hmm. They're more orange, actually, now I look at them. That's quite a good colour match, isn't it, for those flowers? So, yeah, perhaps we'll just have a little stamp maybe down there. Something like that. So... Put this one on first. Okay. Like that. Okay. And then this one here. Let me just check that this is the right way. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, hopefully you can see that just by having that really, really, really simple formula, you know, and like I say, it is that magic for me, I think, anyway. Isn't, you know, hopefully you will find it if you give this a try, you know, if you're having a day that you're struggling. Or, you know, maybe you just want to do some journal cards and, you know, perhaps you struggle a bit with the collaging of them. This is just a formula that I have just found absolutely to be like a foolproof, you know, works every single time without fail type method um so yeah i mean i really hope that you would find it helpful as well definitely for me this was a bit of a game changer because you know i did struggle sometimes to you know to get the kind of collagey look in the background of a journal card so for me this has been yeah like um i was gonna say revelationary but you know yeah, definitely a game changer anyway. So, um, you know, they now come together much, much, much more easily. So just glue that butterfly down there like that. Isn't that just such a gorgeous journal card? And, you know, that just came together so easily, didn't it? You know, we just had um, postage stamp and then a few stamped items and just kind of worked them in the right way. And it just looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Again, obviously, we could ink around this. We could stitch it on the sewing machine. You know, who knows? I mean, if you were feeling a little bit, like, out of sorts and not really, you know, feeling it too much, you know, you could just leave the ink in. You could leave the sewing for another day. And then, you know, pick it back up another day. But, I mean, I just think that looks such a gorgeous card. So, like that. Okay, so let's do that same formula again for another one. So let's take this one with the gorgeous cottage. Again, just going to ink around on that cottage a little bit. Okay, okay. Just so as we, you know, get it to stand out a little bit more. Now, I'm not sure. This might be better over there. So I'm just going to have a look and see. See whether we want to have anything in the background I've got this bit of kind of texty like letter type piece of stamped um, script it might not really go but let's just have a look and see okay so I mean basically I just wanted to kind of really make that cottage stand out a little bit more because, of course, you know, it's got the green of the tree, which I felt like was blending in a little bit to the green of the background. So just by having that bit of tree there, uh, the bit of script there, it's kind of making it stand out a little bit better. Mm. I mean, I'm tempted to use this 
green stamp because I love bright colours. But I'm not sure, to be honest, whether that's actually, you know, a bit too much. A bit too bright for that, um, that card. What do we think? Hmm... It, yeah, it depends whether I want to be brave or a bit more conservative, really. I've got that one. That one's really nice, actually. Oh, that one's really nice. Yeah, I'm going to go for that one instead. Um, so, yeah, let's get these. And then I'm thinking maybe some sort of book plate or something like that on here. You know, and you can always add to these later. Like I said, you know, if you're sort of struggling and you just you know you just want to get the basics then you could always come back another day and add some other bits you don't have to kind of do it all on day one you know pressure yourself to do it all in one day oh I don't know now thinking I would um put that down there but actually it's quite bright and then the other one not probably quite the right colour. Uh, let me just see what else I've got. I've got that one, but that's big. Hmm. Uh, oh, I've got like a little banner piece. These are from my um, birdhouse kit, these little banners. And I've cut it with the scan and cut, but as you can see, it's not quite cut it correctly so I just need to do a bit of extra trim in there okay let's just ink around there oh dear Come on. let's just take that down oh how gorgeous does that look oh actually it looks lovely everywhere right let's get the script background stuck down okay and that's just on coffee dyed you know paper this is my pink prairie papers in the background there this one um it's just a paper that i've been playing around with but i haven't actually you know created anything with it yet so it's kind of yeah, in, in the pipeline or in in progress, perhaps would be the correct terminology. I don't know. Um, right, just having a quick look now to see whether I've got anything else. Maybe a butterfly or maybe a bow. Maybe none of those things. <laughs> just these. Uh, got some butterflies here. I don't know if these are going to be the right colour at all, but... Have a look and pull them out. So, hmm. Oh, actually, any of these look fine, to be honest. Let's get the postage stamp stuck down. Isn't that stamp just gorgeous on there? I love that stamp. It's really, really pretty. I think I've been hoarding that one for a while because um, I think that might be one that I'd received in a happy mail. It's definitely not really one that I've had, you know, before. But yeah, it's a lovely stamp, isn't it? Honestly, other countries often seem to have just such nice stamps. Why oh, is this so boring? <laughs> I mean, perhaps the Queen doesn't think so, but yeah, I always think, oh, they're so boring. Uh, just having a look, because I felt like I maybe had a pink, pink butterfly, but I might be imagining that. Oh, I have, but look at how bright that is. Oh, actually, those flowers are bright. Yeah, those flowers are bright. So, to be honest, perhaps it doesn't look as terrible as I thought. Do we want the banner on the bottom or on the top? Maybe at the bottom. Okay. Did a complete U-turn there. I was thinking the top. And then just, I thought, no... I think, I think maybe the bottom. Just like at the last minute, changed my mind. Right, let's get the house or the cottage stuck down. Okay, oh dear. Got 
glue dripping off there. Ooh. Oh no, hold on, sorry, my phone's just ringing, hold on. Sorry about that. Honestly, my phone hardly ever rings and every time it does, it's just a nuisance call, you know, it's never anything real, you know, real life. And um, yeah, just yet again, another just nuisance call really. So that's that journal card. So, you know, I mean, hopefully this is really demonstrating, like I say, how quick and easily that they're coming together just by having that little formula on the bottom. So let's take this one. You know, and they're all looking really, really different, aren't they? I mean, none of them look the same as the last one. So even though you may be thinking, oh, that's really boring, you know, doing that same formu formula, it actually gives you really different journal cards, you know, really different looks by the end. Because obviously whatever you've topped them with is what gives you your finished look, if that makes sense. You know, um, it's not really kind of dependent on your background. It's it's more to do with what you're going to be putting on, on the top. So let's just take this little book plate down. So these are my coloured book plates. This is just a really pretty sort of duck egg blue colour, which I thought picks up quite well with this chap from the Belgian blue kit. So something like that. Looks pretty, doesn't it? And then let's just have a look in my stamps again. Oh, I seem to have got them mixed up. Well, that one, I guess it's bluey green, isn't it? It's perhaps that's why that's in there. It's one of those tricky, tricky, whether it goes in the blue or the green. Let's see if I've got more of a, I mean, like I say, that is bluey green, but it's a bit dark. Um, I need a bit more of a sort of washed out, washed out bluey green. Uh, that one, it's not too bad. Let's glue this down. I do often find it, you know, easiest once I've glued things down a bit. Um... And I know I've said that lots of times before as well, but yeah, I find once I've got something stuck on the page, it lessens the ability to be able to keep moving things around, which all the time I can keep moving things around. Of course, I do keep moving things around and then never make an actual decision. So, you know, for me, I think it's almost like sort of imperative to get something stuck on and then I'm like committed and it's kind of, well, you've you've got to go for that now you know yes you can't just keep on chopping and changing which is helpful you know I actually find it's helpful so but you know I'm not saying that my my methods are fine for everybody I'm saying that's what I find helpful um but you may you know you may not find that helpful right I'm actually thinking maybe the postage stamp is too much on this one unless we have the postage stamp somewhere else out. Mm -hmm. Let's just ink this here. Okay. Just going to see whether I've got these flowers here. I don't know whether this would look alright or not, but let's just give it a try. think these flowers are from the Teardrop Valley kit. Okay. Mm. Just think around a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe like that, yeah. So let's pop him down. Like that. Okay. Pop the word down. I still can't really get hold of any of my little favorite brads. So, um, yeah, I've kind of stopped using brads really through the the book plates at the moment because I can't really get a hold of those brads that I absolutely love. So that's why, if you're wondering, well, why is she not using brads ever on the, 
the book, book plates, that's why. Because I can't seem to get hold of my favourite ones, which are just those gorgeous little antique you know, uh, I don't know, antique copper or, yeah, I think they're antique copper. Um, and I just get them from the range. But yeah, they've not had them now for several months and I'm thinking they've probably discontinued them and they're not going to get them ever again. Which, oh, I'm so gutted because they're my favourite brands ever. And um, yeah, because they're that dull, you know, dull, very antique -y kind of look. And they were just the right size. They, yeah, I loved them. I wish I'd stocked up. You know, had I known that they were going to not do them anymore, I would have probably stocked up and bought lots. But yeah, I didn't obviously know they were going to be doing that. So yeah, I might just put another little flower on there. Like that. Okay. Like that. And then just quickly ink around the edge of this one. And like I say, you know, you could then stitch this on the sewing machine. But to be honest, I don't think you have to. I think it looks pretty nice anyway um, without being stitched. So let's move that one to one side. Okay, last one. So the last one is this one. So again, just cut this little stamped image down. Okay. Like that, and mm -hmm. right, that over there, maybe that one down there. Um, now, what do we want to have on here? Let me see whether I've got another reddish postage stamp that would be kind of the right colour red to pick up those flowers. Is that that same one that I pulled in just now? I can't remember whether it is or not. The one that I rejected because I said, actually, that's too red. Have I pulled it in again? <laughs> just for the same, you know, on the same colour match. Oh, honestly, what's wrong with me? Well, what's wrong with me if I did do that? And what's wrong with me that I can't remember whether I did that? I mean, oh, just multiple reasons of questioning what's wrong with me, really. That's quite nice. Let's just pop these back in here. I do really like my stamps being, um, you know, a bit sort of sorted in colour. It makes it quite quick and easy to be able to find, you know, find a stamp. Right, just going to fill in my labels now. They're a bit on the small side. Let me just see, I'm sure I've got some of my bigger labels here as well so but of course now I'm looking for them I'm not going to be able to find them mm. come on big labels you are here somewhere yeah you know, you know I have them somewhere but mm, just couldn't find them for a minute let's just try this one. Oh, that's not really the right color is it it might be it's worth a try isn't it worth a try so these are just my labels from the labels set two, I think it is. Which is a huge set, I think. It might be... I can't honestly remember and I don't want to misquote, but yeah, you get lots of, lots of different labels anyway. And it's, it's nice to have a good variety, isn't it? Maybe something like that. Yeah, that's quite nice. And then let's see, butterfly, which, you know, this is a really good colour match with this. So we could have that down there. Um, or what do I prefer? I'll just see if I've got one that's a bit more red. I've got that one. I've got that one. Hmm, don't think this is quite the right colour, to be honest, but. Let's have a look and see. Mm. 
Okie dokie. Let's just try that. I don't mind either if I'm truthful. I think either look fine. Let's just pop this down here. Okay. down here like that okay right just going to see whether I might prefer to have a red label at the bottom instead of that green one Right, let's just think around there. Yeah, I think the red does look better, doesn't it? Because the, um, oh, it's quite nice up there. Or am I getting a bit many things over there? Let me just try this, hold on. That's quite nice, to be honest. And slightly different, having the the things. Yeah, let's do that actually. So again, just pop that label down. On there like that. This I'm gonna have sort of near the label. And I think that butterfly then down, oops, down the bottom kind of where it is, so like that. Right, and then the yellow butterfly, yeah, here. Okay. Okay, and then I'm just going to ink around the edge of this one for a, a little bit. I mean, we kept it really 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 simple we just did that very standard um collaging technique you know to bring our journal cards together you know really not got stressed at all and you know just yeah kept it to some very basic minimal um you know uh not materials but you know pieces to add we didn't kind of overwhelm ourselves or anything and you know we've now got four absolutely gorgeous journal cards you know that we can use then in f future projects but all stemming from just this very basic formula, um, you know, for the collaging on the on the journal card. So, yeah, I hope that you feel inspired. And if you are lacking a bit of crafty motivation at the moment, you know, which sometimes does happen, doesn't it? Then hopefully this has kind of given you some ideas and, you know, just maybe just reinvigorated your, your um, creativity. So, yep, I hope that you enjoyed the process and I will see you guys for episode five tomorrow. Thanks so much then. Have a great day. Bye.